Last week, I went through a bit of a conundrum. If you remember from the last video, I asked for your suggestions on what I should do with my filament because it's just not working out for me on the top of the printer shelf. So, duh, I came up with an idea. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So as you can see behind me, those racks that were there that we spent so much time putting filament on, they're no longer there. I decided that really wasn't the best layout for the filament. So one of them is on the other side of the shop, holding my 40 watt laser from WeCreate. And then I put one over here behind my desk. I do still have one rack that I wanna get put up over here on the bottom so I can store some of the filament that is still in plastic wrap. I didn't wanna put anything down there that was open in case dust, debris, dog hair, which is a thing around here, who just so happens to have himself wrapped around the cable. Nice going. <laughs> You're ridiculous. I love you. Uh, I didn't want it to get all over the filament and possibly cause extrusion or issues with any of the printers. So I need to get that bottom rack put on. We can get all of the packaged up filament put down there, probably on this shelf and the shelf beneath it once we get it put on. I will link the actual rep rack racks down in the description below if you wanna do something like this for yourself. Uh, essentially the same thing, just a slightly different design. Most people that I see doing it are using metal conduit or PVC conduit from Home Depot or the like. I chose to go with wooden dowels. They're cheap, I have a wood shop, so it was pretty easy to cut them all down. And even if you don't, you can cut them with a handsaw. They're pretty thin and pretty light. So with the help of my brothers last week, I got those installed. I didn't film any of it just to get it done, but I do wanna get that last one put up right now. What they look like is this right here. They get mounted against the wall like that. There's a slot on either side. It's kind of a 45 degree, we'll call it a French cleat. And this guy goes into there, slots into place, and you're good to go. But because you're not measuring from the top of this and we're measuring from the top of this, all of these have to be lined up together. The easiest way that I found to do it is just to install one of them and then take a measurement from the floor or ceiling, I suppose, depending on how you're installing them and mark it on the wall. If you have an iPhone, and I'm sure it's baked in somewhere into Android too, they have a level app because I can't find my level ever when I need it. So this is what I'm gonna use to figure out if this is semi-level or not. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Good enough for government work. And then I'll take a measurement from my little sill plate here up to the top. Looks like 20 and 7 eighths. Then I can go over to my next stud down here and make another measurement at 20 and 7 eighths. And I will do the same thing over on this side. And I'll line the top of the bracket up with the top of that line. Get my level out and install this one. So because this is pretty close to the bench on this side and the rack over on this side, I don't really have a whole lot of room to slide this bracket through. So instead, I'm just gonna slide the dowels through the center bracket, get that sort of place like that, and then I can come back in and add the brackets on either side. And that's ready to go. Like I mentioned before, the plan for this bottom rack is all of these spools that are still in plastic wrap. Now, what I'll end up doing with them afterwards if I pull them out, I don't really know. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. So that's gonna do it for all of the unopened spools of PLA that I have to include a glow-in-the-dark PLA from Sunlu that we're gonna put to use in one of the next videos. I got a lot of great ideas in the last video from a lot of you different people out there. 
So I appreciate that. One that really caught my attention though, I think it's pretty good use of glow in the dark filament, especially glow in the dark green. If I can help it at all, I'm gonna leave this side of the rack open just in case I get any more new spools of PLA or even PET G in, just so we're not having to move stuff around down the road or anything like that. For the next shelf up, I need to get all of my PET G loaded up, whether it's in plastic or out of plastic, it's gotta have a home. I've got a couple spools of ABS that I've been trying out. Just keep ABS in mind because some of the stuff that I've ordered over the last couple of days, it all pertains to getting ABS to stick. I'll talk about it later. And then I've got some burnt titanium ASA from FlashForge. I don't use ASA a lot, but it's nice to have it when I need it. And finally, two spools of PETG carbon fiber. Look at that, we got room for two more. On these top two shelves will be whatever PLA I can fit. In no particular order. Maybe there's a use for this little slot here. Little 250 gram roll that Flash Forge sends with the 5M Pro and the 5M. So as things sit right now, I've got room for two more spools of PLA up there and probably one, two, three, four, five, six. Six more spools of unopened filament on this rack down here. Bottom rack is full of black Elegoo PLA because I go through a lot of black Elegoo PLA. Got all my PET G and higher temp filaments up here. All of this over here is just regular PET G. Then it moves into the carbon fiber PET G. Two spools of ASA and three spools of ABS. I've been playing around a lot with ABS. And like I mentioned before, I bought a lot of stuff this week, four things in particular that all pertain to ABS. Let me show you. So regardless of which machine I'm trying to print the ABS on, inevitably I always end up with a slight lift. Now, the 5M Pro is really good at printing it with no adhesion or any sort of additional glue, I would say, on the build plate, but there is still that slight lift in the corner if you've got a print that's going for two or three hours. And, well, I didn't want the slight lift anymore. So, one of the first things that I thought I would try out, I don't know why I threw that, I, I need that. Anyway, this is a polycarbonate build plate from FlashForge. It's not meant for really anything other than ASA and ABS. You try to print PETG on it, especially without a release agent like Magigoo or glue, uh, you'll never get it off from what I've read anyways. But it's supposed to be exceptionally good at holding ABS down with no glue whatsoever. The next one that I thought I'd pick up, and this one's a little controversial for me because it's the Glacier from CryoGrip. If you've been a viewer of the channel for any length of time, I have the CryoGrip Glacier for the A1 Mini, and I couldn't get Jack to stick to it. Who's Jack? I don't know. Hey, what's up? Surprisingly enough, I was able to get ABS to stick to this on the A1 Mini, and it almost completed the print. I did need a little bit of Magigoo on there, but for ABS on an open frame machine, yes, I did have a fume extractor hooked up, to, well, not hooked up to the machine, but very, very close to the machine to help draw those ABS fumes in there. Aside from that, I was pretty impressed, especially since the A1 Mini's build plate limits out at 80 Celsius, and for ABS, you really want something closer to 90. So it impressed me on that fact. So I picked this one up for the Flash Forge. It's a 220 by 220 build plate. It will sort of slot into the machine right there. And I thought I'd give that one a go. I have seen some super impressive results with it from my buddy Zero. Some of the stuff that he's been printing on that plate gives me very high hopes not just for ABS or ASA, but what he's been printing is PLA. And well, it, I'll, I'll link it down below and let the results speak for themselves because it blew my mind. So I'm gonna be trying out the Glacier on the 5M Pro specifically for ABS, but of course I'm gonna try it with PETG, PLA, and uh, I don't know, some nylon maybe? It has significantly more adhesion than a standard PEI sheet, but it also says slightly less than Frostbite does for PLA and PETG. And Frostbite is the one that I always go to on my P1P. They do make that for the A1 Mini as well, and I should be getting one of those in some time this year. But for now, all I've got it for is the P1P. Unfortunately, they don't make it for any other machines as far as I know. The Glacier seems to be the only one they have for machines like the Plus 4, the 5M, and the like. Another thing that I picked up this week to help with 
Pet G specifically from sticking to the nozzle. It's this little plastic repellent paint from Slice Engineering, and it works wonders. So if you have problems with Pet G or any other filament for that matter, sticking to your nozzle as you're printing, get yourself a little bottle of this. It's about $19, $20 at the time of this recording right now, but from what I can see, it goes a long way. Like I don't, I don't have to keep repainting it on there, so uh, I guess I'll just wait until it's no longer preventing the filament from sticking to the build plate, and then we'll address it again there. But I've got this on the 5M Pro, 5M, and the Neptune 4 Plus, since some of you were saying I would have issues with PETG sticking on that. I don't. This stuff works great. Like I mentioned before, I also picked up another thing of Magigoo. That's what I used on the A1 Mini to get ABS to stick. Like I said, it went through about an hour of the print before I was starting to notice it lifting off the plate, and then of course it started to make the whole top messy. It wasn't going to complete right, so I ended it. But I was able to get ABS to stick on an open frame printer with this stuff. It does seem to be a little bit thicker than the Flash Forge glue, but they both pretty much work the same. Give it a big shake and then kind of rub it around on the build plate. It'll help with releasing certain materials, but it also helps with certain materials to stick. Both of them work far better than just a standard Elmer's glue stick. Water printer companies keep sending those. I mean, they work, but then they leave a messy coating all over your bed and Come on, it's not 2016 anymore. Just ignore that electrical line there. It's not active. In order to put up the filament rack, I had to take away one of my 220 volt outlets. So, oh well, I don't use them anymore. The real showstopper today though, is the Vision Miner Nano Polymer Adhesive. And let me just say, I've heard all the hype about this stuff. Like how much better could it actually be than the Magigoo? But I had a couple projects coming up, specifically one that's printing right behind me on the Plus 4. That's a PA6 carbon fiber. So carbon fiber reinforced nylon. And nylon in general just has a rough time sticking to the bed. So, well, I could have used Magigoo. The stuff that I have is not rated for nylon. Really didn't want to use a regular glue stick. I do have some here, but like I said, it kind of makes for a messy bottom surface and then, you know, it builds up on the build plate. It's just not great. So uh, I went on to Amazon. They didn't send this to me. I paid for this out of pocket, but it's designed for PLA, PETG, ABS, polycarbonate, ASA, Peak, Ultim, not even quite sure what that is, but I guess I'll do some research and throw it up on screen right now so you know what it is. Nylon, TPU, and carbon and glass fiber reinforced filaments, plus more. So I've printed like six of these out, trying to get some filament dialed in. This is Sunlu's PA6 carbon fiber. Prints at a little bit of a lower temperature than the Fiberon does from Polymaker, which I'm more used to. I think I've got this printing at like 250 right now on the nozzle and about 60 on the bed, which blows my mind for nylon because Nylon usually prints at a higher temperature than that, but I'm not gonna argue with what works. So I've got a full video on this. It's gonna come out eh, whenever it comes out, but I broke my microphone stand. Well, not the stand itself, but the clamp that goes on the desk. I kind of over torqued it. So it's made out of some injection molded plastic. This print is out of that filament right there, but I am printing another one out in this direction. This was printed out like this. I figured it doesn't hurt to have both of them because if one breaks, I've got another one that I don't have to wait two and a half hours for. Anyway, I redesigned this part in Fusion. It's completely different looking aside from the fact that it mounts on the desk and has a hole that's the same size as the microphone arm. My thought process was I want the strongest material that I have available. I've got regular nylon, but the carbon fiber reinforced stuff, just it's super rigid, which may actually work against me in this particular situation, but I suppose we'll find out when I go to actually put it on my desk. The nylon is, is it's a really rigid, almost unbreakable material, aside from the fact that it's 3D printed, so it's got layer lines. Anyway, I'm kind of going off topic here. You can see I designed the threads in here and left a flat side so we could print it on the bed and build the part up like this. That way we've got the strongest possible screw or threads in here, I guess. It works really well, threads together, but I did go through quite a few different iterations trying to dial in the settings to get it to fit perfectly. I printed it out first with PETG, first go around, worked great. The carbon fiber filaments add a little bit of extra, well, roughness or texture to it. So it took a little bit of tweaking. I think this was version four, but I was able to get it all dialed in anyway. For the last day and a half, I've been going back and forth printing this carbon fiber reinforced nylon on the plus four. I squirted some of this nanopolymer adhesive from Vision Miner 
onto the build plate, brushed it around with a little brush that they include with it and didn't really think much of it. Like it, it's just kind of a liquid. It doesn't really smell like anything other than isopropyl alcohol, which it does say right on the back contains isopropyl alcohol. So that makes sense. But holy crap, does this stuff work? I put off buying it for so long just because I didn't think it was something that I would need. It turns out this stuff's gonna come in handy. Now I don't have any machines in here that can print peak, but I do have everything else aside from polycarbonate on this. And I guess for the hell of it, I'll probably buy some polycarbonate just to have it here for whatever reason. But this is just a standard PEI sheet that came with the plus four and there's no lifting at all. My first go around with printing anything nylon, I had a hell of a time with it. Just because building up the layers, it would get to, I don't know, layer four or five, six. And as it started to cool, it would just release from the build plate because that's the nature of nylon. Not with this stuff. So there's my little spiel. If you have bad adhesion issues, I think if you're gonna pick one of them, you know, between these two, the Magigoo is only good for PLA, ABS, PETG, and TPU, whereas this is good for everything. So my vote would be on the nano coat, nano polymer adhesive stuff from Vision Miner. Again, not sponsored. They didn't send it over. I bought it myself right on Amazon, showed up four or five days later. And this stuff is also made in the USA. So I guess that's a plus for those of us in the USA. Now I've also got the S1 from Infinity Flow 3D that I did a video on a few weeks ago. If you haven't seen how that little fancy machine works and you have a printer without an AMS system in particular, I will link that video as well as the product listing for it down in the description below if you wanna go pick one up for yourself. Well, we've come full circle back to the filament rack, except this time it's got filament on it. Not all of our filament, but I'd say about 95% of it. Uh, and if I do need a little bit more room, I do have space up top there above the angle of the camera that we can put one more rack up. Aside from everything that I talked about today, the stuff that I got in and some tests that I've been working on, stuff I've been designing, I don't really have a whole lot more for today's video. Just kind of a little update for the last week or so. In the next video, we're gonna be getting some Etsy orders shipped out. That's been actually picking back up to a pretty steady pace, I guess I'll call it. The first few months of the year, I guess January, February, March, and even I guess most of April, it's been pretty slow. But the last week or two of April, it's been picking back up Been getting, you know, at least a couple sales per day. So getting back into the groove and going to try to get some more uh, videos on Etsy coming out. In the last video, we took some photos of a couple new products that I'm gonna put on my Etsy store. In an upcoming video, we're gonna get those listed onto Etsy. So if you're curious about my listing process and what I do to get all the listings up there, how I go about putting the photos in there and stuff like that, that will be in an upcoming video. Speaking of Etsy, I've got a couple products to get sent out right now, which will be in the next video. So if you wanna see that, hit that subscribe button down below. With all that said, thank you all for joining me today. I know this one was a little bit longer, more talking, less doing, so to speak. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you an update on what's been going on here in my little print farm. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments about the things that you saw, in today's video. Be sure to leave them down below in the comments section. I do try to read every one of them, well, at least the nice ones. And while I can't respond to every one of them, just know that if I give you a little heart there, I've seen your comment and I appreciate it. Take care, folks. I hope you guys have an awesome week and I will see you all in the next one. See ya.